Do you feel tense? Do you feel British? It's the British Drama Toolkit. And uh, you caught me. I was playing a little bit of it. In all seriousness, folks, um, these libraries that you see before you, the new one here is the BDT, British Drama Toolkit. It's a mouthful. I'm just going to keep saying BDT. Below, I have the Oliver Arnold's Chamber Evolutions, another mouthful. The reason I've organized them in this way is because I can. We're hanging out in contact here. These libraries complement each other, I think, in tone and in color. They're both blue, which is kind of nice. I have uh, the MIDI routing such that Port A1 is down here, port A1 is up here on both, which means I can play them at the same time. But because I have them both hanging out here in contact, um, I've decided to split things up a little bit so that BDT is getting the, 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 the center stage and the spotlight. But Olafur is still in the background. If you don't know what Olafur is doing, by the way, um, this is what it sounds like. And I should add, I'm going to be going over how I feel about this library, where I think it fits in your collection, um, roses, thorns, all the rest of it in a little bit. But let's just sort of explore the sound and then the patches and then get to that stuff. Chamber Ways, if you don't know what we're dealing with here, one of my favorite Spitfire libraries, honestly, to date. Um, we get these beautiful big crescendos, these big curtains of sound that sort of, uh, you know, they, they, they're they all full of energy and they excuse me, they dissipate. So this is what it sounds like on its own. And if you don't know, you can hold shift and access different articulations and have them all play at once here. So I've, I've just added two normale and two others. Spitfire tells me the tremolo and this guy over here. So this is just filling out the space as I play around and do some more right hand kind of sinewy pointed stuff, legato stuff with BDT. Um, when you are pairing stuff like this together, uh, both in EQ and in tone and in width and in presence, you have to make sure that you level things out so that everything isn't occupying the same space. To that end, what I've done is I've activated what I think is the are the ambient mics. They're kind of these ghostly, very far left and right to my ears anyway mics. Um, and this is, again, separating space, filling out the sides with um, information uh, to let BDT take center stage here. And I've brought dynamics down, expression down, and also the main potentiometer, the main volume, sort of the, you know, after everything, uh, volume section here down a lot because I want it to be operating kind of in the background, supporting what I'm doing with the BDT up here, which if I unmute and mute the Olafur Arnold's Chamber Evolutions sounds like this. Mind you, we're hanging out here in the ensemble section, so we're just playing with strings with this patch, and I'll get into what is going on here with these three velocity splits over here in a session and in a second, but here's what it sounds like. So we can play around and be a bit more detailed and focused and pointed with BDT while Olafur is, you know, playing all the notes that I'm hitting and all that stuff, but just bringing these big kind of curtains and stuff like that of sound, which is what you heard at the beginning of the demo. just a good idea to pair stuff together and not be afraid of like oh this doesn't have the same reverb and not just spitfire stuff just cluster stuff together from native instruments from orchestral tools from ember tone whatever don't be afraid it's easier than you think to make everything blend and sound really good usually where people go wrong is that they just add too many effects and too much stuff and then it starts to sound really artificial and gross and weird and if you've seen my anatomy of a q series and all the rest of it you know that very little will get you a very long way it's about less not more so 
But don't be afraid to experiment with this stuff. Why don't we dive into British Drama Toolkit? My girlfriend, by the way, walked in when I was playing with this earlier, and she saw the name in big, bold letters. She's like, that's exactly what it sounds like, British Drama Toolkit. Um, so, yeah, uh, it sounds dramatic, and it's British. I haven't tested, I should say, this library on, you know, Portuguese comedies or... Uh, you know, Icelandic documentaries so far that seems to be just, you know, British drama that I'm supposed to be using this on. We like to have some fun here on the channel. Um, let's go through uh, the ensembles. We stick things together, brass and I, or bass, sorry. And let's go over here. We have flute. And then if I keep going, we get our strings over here eventually. And then our woodwinds, I believe, ensemble there. And you see as I shift between these guys, watch at the top here, these velocity splits. Are they splits? I can't tell. I can't tell if that says splits because um, contact, Spitfire, if you know anyone at contact, can you please tell them to make their friggin' thing retina display? It's 2018. Uh, someone in the comments is going to be like, dude, it is retina. You just haven't downloaded the updated version. But anyway, Spitfire, if you know anyone at contact, please tell them because this is crazy. I mean, you know, anyway. Um... Let's keep going here. Let's go to the mains where we have, usually this is where people start, right? When they open things up. So if I play some stuff here on the keyboard again, texture soft and loud, why is this important? This is important because we're no longer controlling expression and dynamics with a bunch of faders. That stuff is being triggered, or I guess dictated or outsourced rather by the velocity, the intensity with which you hit these keys. If I just press one key here, watch this texture bubble over there. Very softly, we're gonna get texture. I'm gonna mute chamber waves over here. If I play a little harder, goes up a little bit, play it harder than that. Entering loud territory. Which means you can just sort of feel it out and use your kind of emotions to move around the keyboard. Now the nice thing about this is you're not really focused so much on automating. This is what I love and I've always loved about the um, VR Harmonic uh, Bohemian uh, series, the Soul Capture series with their cello and violin. It's just beautiful the way that you can just kind of focus on what you're doing instead of your automation and all the rest of it. Obviously you can go in and automate things afterwards, most people will, but the ability to go in and just create on the spot is really helpful I think, especially when we have all these screens and distractions and we're focused on the end result and the notes that we're going to get back from a director or producer or whoever it's nice to be able to just sort of focus and just play with emotion and intention and just get something really quick which is i think the key behind this whole library from spitfire is instant cues and you know all we need is your music and all the rest of it great marketing copy as always from spitfire audio by the way so let's dive into a couple of these patches um, in mains we start over here with some tutti longs. We're not gonna go through each patch, but still, these are some good ones. I don't know if this is true legato, by that I mean they sample every sort of interval. So when someone goes from a, you know, a, a C to an octave up C or something like that, they'll sample that so it sounds natural. It sounds pretty darn good. Again, not sure if it's true legato. I looked on the website, I couldn't find it. I couldn't, I just, I did, well, I looked on the website. It was Command F, and then I looked for true legato, and it didn't put that there. So, anyway, but it sounds very natural. textual. 
By the way, I'm just not playing very well. I'm, I'm pretty tired, but I really wanted to explore this library. I think where it comes into play here is in the ensembles where I hung out most of the time. Just I like being able to to go between these these different arranged marriages here of instruments. I find the restriction is kind of nice to be just doing, you know, woodwind stuff over here. And the woodwinds just sound beautiful. I think once the industry is kind of finished with its obsession over strings, the next thing is going to be something else, some other section of the orchestra. And I think Spitfire have done a great job of just being there already with the woodwinds. And that's one thing I encourage people to do as you hear, you know, well, hopefully what I'm getting at here is this library has a very interesting pulse and humanity to it. it on one end, it's it's a bit like an Evo where things evolve, you know, the, the longer you hold the note, the, the more directions that it goes in. So if I just play an E here, for example. You can hear things changing and shifting and maybe the player repositioning. And by the way, with anything woodwind or reed, you just you don't want to play too long because then, you know, because people in real life breathe. So you want to be careful that you don't do that. But let's choose another one. and Hopefully I, I can get to what I'm talking about here. So as I play, things shift around a little bit and we get, you know... I don't know, I think it's just kind of growing and coming out of the ground a little bit. We get a bit of a different texture, which is kind of cool. So the, in that way, it's a bit like evo -y. But at the same time, you have this kind of playability, which is really nice to be able to just kind of walk around the keyboard and get a realistic legato. Well, to me, realistic legato sound. Again, when you combine it with Olafur, it just sounds great. Anyway, so I'm not going to go through everything that we see here. We have the advanced panel uh, into which we have, you know, just more sort of granular. Um, stuff that we wouldn't see from all these individual patches. We go from A to J, from main to piccolo. So you can really sort of dig in and dive in and, and play with certain things that you want. But I think most people are going to be hanging around the ensembles and mains, to be honest. They just sound very good. Um, and I should mention here, because we're all about velocity with this library, if we want to, we can click on a different perspective. We're hanging out over here in this uh, this area of BDT. Click on the gear wheel, not a gear wheel, it's a wrench rather. Get a different perspective, but maybe what you're used to, we get our expression, reverb, um, sections here, and this is a bit more simplified here. So you get your, I guess, two different mic positions. But if you want to reposition the velocity, you can go over here um, and go from a linear to something else that they have, or even a custom curve if you're not used to playing this way. And maybe, you know, pencil something in that is a bit more appropriate or makes you feel like, you know, what you're hitting is what you're hearing. I'll bring that back over here to linear velocity. So what do I think of this library? Um, do I think it's worth it? And do I think it matches up with the copy, the marketing copy coming out of Spitfire Audio? So what do I think of this library? I think this library is incredible. I, I think that this is what more people need to be focusing on instead of the companies out there who are like, oh, we recorded this, you know, in the Grand Hall where Paul McCartney took a dump in 1965. Like, who cares about the room and the environment and all the rest of it? It's about playability. It's about how easily I can get from A to B. A, you know, the root. B, the fruit. How quickly I can get to that place 
um, with just a couple of notes. That's what it's going to be about. It's about user experience. It's about playability. It's about that kind of instant, yes, this is what I'm looking for. And I really like that Spitfire is going in, in, in this direction. I don't have the solo strings but uh, that they just put out. It's a little expensive, but it looks like it's the same thing where velocity is kind of dictating things and it's more about emotion and quick feeling than, oh, we have the perfect handcrafted violin that was, you know, polished by Japanese virgins. And anyway, so it's just nice that we're, we're, we're dealing with playability and instant kind of cue creation. That's something's happening on the highway. That's, I think, where we need to be going. Um, especially, you know, for composers that are not coming from traditional theory laden heavy backgrounds. This library, I think, does exactly what it's supposed to do in that regard. Instant, quick, you know, just add water and start playing. And you've got, you know, some really great sounding things that can either be their own thing or they can be um, the accompanying stuff in the background of something a bit more detailed and over the top. So on that level, I think they do a great job. I think the velocity based thing, once you start playing with it, makes sense. Every library, I think I mentioned this in a few other videos, every Spitfire library requires a certain reorientation of your muscles when you're playing and stuff, like the Bernard Herrmann stuff with the chords, you know, you have to make sure you take your finger off at the right time, otherwise it'll choke the other notes and it sounds unnatural for the chords to come in. When you play with this for a little while, just have an open mind and start tinkering a little bit. And I think you'll be good and you'll start playing it in a realistic way. They all require their own kind of like dress code of playing. And you just have to find out what that is and start playing and you'll understand. I think this library also serves a really interesting connection between the lab stuff, which is the free stuff in a totally different GUI, and the Hans Zimmer, you know, welcome to this is you've reached the top, man. You've made it, baby. You've come a long way stuff. Because for a while, the upgrade story was kind of complicated. It was um, they didn't have labs. It was the, you know, donate what you can and then you get the library. I think that's how it worked anyway. Or no, it was like everything you donate goes to labs. So you get that. And then the jump would be like, hey, you got this thing for five quid. Do you like these strings? Because we have Hans Zimmer, which is a thousand dollars. And then they started to do the free thing with labs, which makes sense, I suppose. But the upgrade story there was kind of confusing. So what I think this library does in a really awesome way is build a bridge between those two worlds. And the price point is perfect. It's 149 USD for now. It'll probably flip to 199 pretty soon. But 199 makes sense. You get um, a whole orchestra, pretty much. You get this easy um, to look at and play experience. And then you get, you know, if you buy this, you're in a nurture stream because they know you don't have anything else. And they'll go, hey, you, you pay 200 bucks for strings. You might love these ones. Or, hey, we have woodwinds now if you want full on woodwinds. Or, hey, we noticed you have this thing. There's no percussion in BDT. Uh, do you want this, you know, Hans Zimmer percussion thing? So it's a much more sensible upgrade story than just going from, hey, you're broke, labs, down with Thatcher, like change the system, be something, to welcome to Zimmer Strings, give us $1,000. This makes sense, I think, as a, as a kind of conduit between those two worlds and environments. It sounds beautiful. It's very playable. The only thing, I guess the, the, the thorns, if we're going to thorns now, is... We are hanging out in, uh, we're back to contact. I don't understand the switching between, you know, labs and Zimmer strings, and then we're back to con. Like, we, I feel like we just kind of have to pick a team and just put the jersey on, and, and just that's who we're going to play for from now on. It's either contact or it's not or whatever because it's just it's just confusing to me to jump between all these different things i mean i was complaining in the last couple of videos about spitfire because they were going with this new company and at the same time like that's what you want is you want to kind of break free from whatever you're tethered to in this case it's contact it's native instruments you want to do your own thing awesome but now we're back here so i like i want to congratulate spitfire for like asserting their autonomy awesome great good go with a different company for the user experience and the gui and all the rest of it awesome but now we're releasing new products and here we are back in contact. So while I'm happy we're here, I'm just wondering why we're not having like a consistent user experience. I don't really understand that. Um, but honestly, that's pretty much all. Anything negative I have to say about the library, that's it. Um, this is a great tool for beginners. It's probably going to help a lot of people who've been composing for years and are doing more and more in the box under like more 
strict deadlines or whatever it is. Um, the weird thing with Spitfire, which a few people have pointed out, is that, and this might be a bit of a thorn, is that they don't put the name of the library in the actual logo in contacts. You have, <laughs> have to, like, rifle through and, and look at the fine print Albion 5. Okay, got it. You know, Spitfire, Symphonic Strings. Whereas other companies just put it right there, Metropolis Arc 3, Arc 2, Arc 1. So if you're looking at this stuff and, and Spitfire, they're probably having to get pretty creative with the colors here. Uh, because the colors will dictate what the library is, you might get kind of tripped up. I've often, um, I have often mistook Orchestral Swarm for Symphonic Woodwinds because they're the same color, and I have often mistook for whatever reason Chamber Strings and Albion Five because they're the same color and they're right next to each other. So that's kind of annoying that we're just going to go with this Spitfire plus, you know, uh, this gauzy distorted image behind it. But hey, whatever. I'm just here to play the stuff. So um, thank you, Spitfire. I think you did a wonderful job. I'm really happy these libraries are coming out of the world. I do think these, um, maybe even more than labs, empower people and make them feel like they're welcome into the club, into the priesthood, into the, you know, come, come worship with us. I think these libraries and these tools and the way that we play them and the way that you've set them up for us, I think these will enable a lot, a lot of people to feel creative, which is what it's all about. And I commend Spitfire on this level because... They, I think, are learning, like a lot of companies in this space, that it is not about the purest, most perfect emulation. It's not about making sure you have the brush plate and the and the screws and all the rest of it and the screwomorphic design. It is about usability, about that kind of instant gratification, about putting your finger down and being like, oh, maybe I have something to say here with this library. Like my girlfriend was in here. She doesn't play keyboard at all. She plays guitar, she sings, but she was playing. We were playing together and we've never done that before on the keyboard. And she was over here on the right and I was playing the low stuff and we were playing a British drama toolkit. We we're just having fun with it. And she was like, wow, everything I do sounds good. That's what she said. Everything I do sounds good. So anyway, for what it's worth, I know that um, it's kind of tricky. I've said some negative things about Spitfire and at this point, they're probably just tuning me up. But for the people on the channel, um, go go pick this up. It's awesome. I'll leave a link, you know, in, in the description. And thanks for following this really long-winded, tired, albeit drunken, albeit drunken video. I really appreciate it. It's getting harder and harder for me to do these reviews because I'm just. I was in Houston, or no, where I was in Nashville in New York, and then I'm going to be in Boston, and then I'm going to go to L.A., and then I'll be in Japan. It's just getting crazy, but. Thanks for sitting and being patient and being part of this channel. I love you guys. Okay. Good night. One in the morning.